for a running back to do what he does reminds me of Peyton Manning when I was around Peyton Manning for three years. He started at the bottom of the totem pole. He worked really hard. He's earned the spot from day one. With how good Torrey is, if you have a guy like that, he absolutely is a weapon. You know, I'm a country boy, so I come from the country. Blake Carp does it again! The little big man! I don't have many neighbors, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm kind of just out there by myself grinding. It's a different perspective. Cora, cut back, touchdown, number five! And that ties a Michigan program record. I come from a small town called Marshall, Virginia. 1,200 people that live there, it's a one stop light town. The college coaches aren't really coming out there, you know what I'm saying? I might have been found, but you never know. When he was young, I knew he was special. Everybody in this county knew he was special. The first two years of high school, he attended Pilates in Laurel, Maryland. When he finally transferred schools his junior year to uh, St. Francis, he boarded there. This is a small town, so I knew, you know, and being in Maryland, the opportunities would be a little different. And you know about these schools. You see these athletes are going to D1s, you know. It was almost a no-brainer. But I knew this is not my dream, this is his dream. And I wanted, as his dad, to give him the best opportunity that I could. My parents would drive two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening, and that's not counting traffic. The first two years, the drive was unreal. My wife, Christina, she would drive him there in the morning. So they would leave here, I don't know, 4.30, 5 o'clock. I hate it those mornings. <laughs> I dread it those mornings. But he never once complained. I never had to tell him to wake up. And I would leave here in the afternoons. Sometimes we wouldn't get back in until 8.30, 9 o'clock. They sacrificed a lot, and I'm so appreciative for that because like, that's where I'm at now. Like I wouldn't have been there if I would have stayed in my hometown. Going back to my junior year of high school, when I first met Blake, we were doing one-on-ones, working out, and I'm like, this dude, he's, he's a worker. So after practices, he would get another workout. After some games, if the game was too easy, he would get another workout in. That's just the type of guy. He still is at Michigan. When you talk about his work ethic and who Blake Corum is, he's this guy that texts me at 5.30 in the morning, saying, hey coach, I'm going in to get some work in, in the indoor. And I'm kind of like, I'm just waking up. One time at Michigan, Blake called and he was like, Mom, they locked me out. And I was like, locked you out of what? And he was like, they're not letting me come in and work out. Blake works so much that it's too much. When I got here, I tried to talk to him about rest is just as important. As he's matured, he's getting to that point where he knows, you know, it's okay for me to relax today. That's what I had to learn. And sometimes it's still a little hard. At the end of the day, they know what's right, they've been where I'm trying to go. Here's Corp, Blake Corp. See you later, touchdown Michigan. For a running back to do what he does reminds me of Peyton Manning when I was around Peyton Manning for three years. He's not gonna have any excuse not to be great. He wants to be great and nothing's gonna slow him down from doing that. It's gonna be the All-American kicker, Torrey Taylor. Tory Taylor. And, oh, look at the English on that one. This guy's amazing. When I first saw Tory, I like, kicked the ball. He's got a miss of a leg. I tell you what, Tory Taylor's going to get a game ball. He's been brilliant. With how good Tory is, it's like if you have a guy like that, he absolutely is a weapon. I've been kicking a ball for 20 years, and that was really one thing that has helped me since I got here is it, it's nothing different. Tory Taylor is making a Heisman type. How do you spell seat? MVP <laughs> in Australia? I'm from Melbourne, Australia. Dad used to take us out for a kick of the footy, as, as we would say. 
When I was about 14, I stopped playing Australian football. I just had enough. I didn't really enjoy it anymore, and I feel like when you're not enjoying it, then what's the point of, of doing it? I finished high school, and then I was working at a golf course, and I was working construction for a little bit. Wasn't really sure whether that was what I wanted to do. It was probably when I was 19, 20, I kind of heard about Pro Kick Australia. Pro Kick Australia is basically a program that transitions Australian football players and teaches them the art of punting as such. I kind of knew by joining the program I was going to be good enough to get a scholarship and obviously Division 1 was the goal. Coach Woods made his way out to Melbourne and then yeah, it kind of just went from there. When I first heard of Iowa, I was like, where is it? Nah, look, oh, I don't want to go to Iowa. That, that, that doesn't interest me at all. But then I had a couple of conversations with Coach Woods, the special teams coordinator here, and yeah, just the family atmosphere that I kind of felt like I would be a part of here was really a big thing for me. American football is a complicated game in itself, but I just try and simplify it as much as I can. I was 23 when I played my first game out at Purdue, and I'm not going to lie, I was really nervous heading into that game, but it was just another day of kicking the football, and I've had plenty of those, so I didn't have too bad of a day that day. Tory Taylor from Australia, another great punt. I think he learned the most during games, which is funny. The funniest one was the Wisconsin game in 2020 when he like the ball was on the ground and he punted it. Yeah, that Wisconsin game, I'd never experienced cold like that in my life, and Austin gave me a good snap and fell out of my hands, and it all happened so quickly, I'm gonna kick it off the ground. I just remember, we're all like, oh, like, that was kind of sick. Like, not knowing, you can't do that. What an ad lib job by Tory Taylor. The ball's on the ground, and rather than trying to pick it up, he just, hey, he played soccer with it. It's been two years now, and this is my life but I'll be lying if I said it, it wasn't difficult being here. It's certainly not home, but I'm just really grateful that everyone, the people of Ive just um, really helped me transition from Australia to here. Adversity is a difficult, unforeseen circumstance coming your way and having to deal with it. I didn't know what to expect when I got here. I had to walk on here and um, first few years here were definitely Hard. There were some lonely times, but my faith really helped me. That's kind of the foundation of who I am. O'Connell steps up, keeps it, and dives in the end zone for the Purdue touchdown. He started at the bottom of the totem pole and worked really hard. He's earned the spot. I mean, earned it uh, from day one. Not until one year we had three quarterbacks go down where he showcased what he was all about. He never complained or wanted to leave or wanted to go somewhere else because it wasn't working out and those end up being your best players. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. My name's Aiden O'Connell. I run the camp. We're all gonna help you out today. Hopefully have a fun day. We're gonna run through some drills. Does that sound cool? Yeah. You ready to catch? But you go one hand, so like here, I'll teach you. To pass on the passion, the joy, the love for the game to the little kids is probably more important than any skill you could teach them, just so they can carry that with them for the rest of their lives. This is called a hash mark. And quarterbacks, when you play quarterback, you drop back like this. That's what we're going to do. Any lefties here? Going to those passing camps. Boom, boom. As a kid, I used to just love being around guys, being around my teammates. That's good. Good. That's perfect. Good. Guys that had similar goals in mind that might be from different walks of life. So as a kid, I really enjoyed those experiences, and they gave me a passion for the game. Tracy in motion. O'Connell with time. Touchdown, Purdue! You can talk about his arm, how accurate it is all day. I mean, you can do that, but I think his confidence is key. He'll be the first to tell you he doesn't identify himself as a football player. He identifies himself as a man of faith. I think that really creates an atmosphere that you feel comfortable being around him. I love him as a person, which I think makes me care about how he plays even more. And we know he's going to play good for us. Me being blessed to be in a situation that I had great players around me, great coaches around me, I think that speaks to success more than really anything I did. Purdue in a back and forth affair, wins it in overtime. The expectations raised after a great season last year, so people are going to be expecting more. 
wanting even more wins and I don't think anybody more than my teammates and I want that for ourselves as well. No one really likes to wait, especially at the position of quarterback. Usually only one guy plays. In high school, I was the backup until my senior year. Looking back, I really didn't understand at the time the, really what was happening. I just wanted to play football. Aiden's journey was pretty unique at Stevenson. He had two older brothers that played here. One was a defensive end and one was a middle linebacker. When Aiden walked in as a freshman, he was six foot, maybe 130 pounds dripping wet. And we were like, where's our linebacker? He had a couple of really good players in front of him. Aiden kind of waited his turn a little bit. And then in 2016, it was his job. If I were to pick a signature game for him, his senior season, the first game of the year, we went up to Muskegon, Michigan. There was a lot of adversity. We're playing on the road, 90 degrees, against a state championship quality football team. And Aiden ended up throwing 36 for 51, 447 yards and four touchdowns. We ended up winning that game 38-35. And that really embodies who Aiden is in terms of his resiliency and just staying calm under pressure and making everybody around him better. He combines the physical and mental aspects of the game. He knows who should get the ball, when they should get it, where they should get it, and he's the point guard of the offense. Basketball was my passion for a long time. I was by no means a superstar. I was lucky enough to start varsity for a couple years, but definitely understood my role as a, a passer, set screens, get rebounds, all that stuff. Aiden was a cerebral player. Calm and cool under pressure in big moments. Dissect the defense and understand what everyone else is trying to do on the football field because he was able to do that as well on the basketball court. When I was younger, I thought I was going to play basketball in college. When I got to high school and I, you know, watched some Friday Night Lights and really fell in love with football from there. One of the greatest things about being a coach is seeing these kids grow up and move on and have success. So I hope he gets everything out of this season that he wanted to when he decided that he was going back for, a, for another year. In my life, I needed to learn patience, to learn how to support others, to kind of be behind the scenes and figure out things with myself before I was ready to step into that role. So that was a smaller battle in high school, having to wait for the starting role, but I think it prepared me to come to Purdue and sit for a few years behind some great quarterbacks. Hindsight's 2020. I was being prepared in those times in the shadows to take the role when I got it. comes to my kids, they're my first priority, so they're my why. You know, me and Blake, we talk about why all the time. You know, why? Why I get up every morning? Why I work 10, 11, 12 hours? You know, why I do what I do? All I can say is me being a father, I gave it all I had. I really like look up to my dad. My dad's a landscaper, so uh, he works long hours, you know, being the boss of the company. I always remember I would be outside waiting on my dad to get home late night, and I would hear his truck back in, like beep, beep, beep. That's really when I remember the, how hard my dad worked for the family. He knew that his dad was coming home, and that was his highlight of his day, like waiting for his dad to get home. I've been watching my dad work his butt off my whole life. He needed a little motivation at times too. I get this video and it's him outside working in the front yard and he says, Dad. He's getting his work, dog. You know what I'm saying? You work, I work. You know, them words stuck with me. I'm like, Dad, he, he understands the sacrifice and the hard work that I'm doing to allow him to do the things that he does. I was just telling him, like, you're not alone in this. Like, I'm working with you. Due to COVID-19, we had to quarantine, so uh, I went home and then I started working with my pops. Having my son with me, we're on the job site laughing, working. My guys loved him because he was a workhorse. Took some slack off them a little bit. 
what I had to do was I had to go in the woods and drag the tree limbs or tree branches or tree stumps out of the woods and then put it in the machine so it could cut it up. And that was a workout. In the weight room, weight room strength, that's cool, but country strength, that's strong now. You know, I think this workout that I can put them through is a little harder than what coaching put them through at Michigan. The journey I've been on, the ups and downs, like everything collectively has been a blessing. Like, and it's because of my parents that I'm in this situation I am today. I'm so thankful for them. The punting is winning shirts came out of an idea from um, a Midwest t-shirt designer. He wanted to make these shirts, right? Because everybody was talking about Tory Taylor in the state of Iowa. If you were a Hawkeye fan, you know, punting and Tory were a big thing. And so he reached out to Tory. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I actually kind of like that, like, good idea. Although, like, I can't partake in any NIL stuff just being an international student. So Tory said, okay, I'm fine with it, but I want it to go to a charity. And Mike, the owner, said, hey, I know a charity that has something to do with kicking. Coach Ferentz has been um, supportive of it. He told Tori about it, and Tori was on board. Yeah, so when I first heard of Count the Kicks, I'm not going to lie, I didn't know anything about it. And, um, but after doing some research and learning about the stories and adversity that a lot of the ladies from the organization had been through, it was really just a no-brainer for me to be a part of the organization. We have this campaign called Count the Kicks. We launched 2007, 2008, and you know, it was born out of grief, just trying to save a baby from what we'd gone through and teaching moms to track their baby's movements, count the kicks in the third trimester. I lost my daughter. Four other Des Moines, Iowa moms also lost daughters and we were connected through pastors or friends. We started to get together because we wanted to know why. We wanted to just get each other through the grief process. We found some research that had just come out from Norway where they had just taught their expecting moms to count their baby's kicks, track the baby's movements in the third trimester. And so we said, we can do that. We can do that in Iowa. Yeah, it really just took off. Like people mentioned, hey, I bought your t-shirt. Uh, hey, I bought your t-shirt. Like I love it. Like I'm wearing it this game. I think by the time the season ended, we'd sold about thirteen thousand dollars worth of t-shirts that was sent off to count the kicks. The unique thing is, Tori could have been done with it at that point. The difference with Tori Taylor is, he cared even more. Right? He cared enough to want to meet the impact of the babies he was saving by donating that money. The organization had reached out and just said, hey, we've got a little baby lamb um, coming down. Like, your efforts have gone a long way to, to helping him. I got to be right there when he met Liam for the first time and his mom. And, I mean, the joy on his face, the joy on the mom's face, it was so authentic and real and he cared about that impact. I will never forget that moment. I never really know like how much of an impact that was gonna have on the ladies, but it was probably one of the best things that's, um, that's happened to me like since I've been here, just being a part of that. Because there's so much more to football than just punting. The Journey, Big Ten Football 2022 is presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Simple human sense. They're almost done, well. Wait a minute. Come on, come on. <laughs> Let him pass it. Well, that'll pay for the next trip back, wouldn't it? There you go. Yeah. No, <laughs> Just one of the great scenes in college football. Sun is out and shining. 
It is a beautiful day for Michigan and Iowa about set to get underway. Last week, Blake Corm, 243 yards. Big test today. They have not played a team this physical yet to this point in the season. This is an Iowa team that prides itself on a physical, tough, gritty type of football. It's going to be a challenge for the guys up front and for Blake Corm. This is college football at its best. When you're on the road, you want to go to a place where they're as passionate about their team. You see the Stripe Stadium. You hear the boos when Michigan takes the field. And that's a special feeling. A nice welcome into Kinnick Stadium. Iowa, Michigan. Here we go. It's going to be handoff to Corman. He's got some room and he's got the first down. Wolverines on this opening drive, establishing a solid run game with Blake Corum. Hawks uh, showing you that bend, but don't break. Uh, they're going to have to bend a little bit more stringent here. Cutting inside is Ronnie Bell to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Ronnie Bell. There was so much attention paid to Blake Corum as, and, and I kind of actually thought he had the ball myself. Well, the Wolverines, a very impressive opening drive. Wolverines force a punt. It's Tory Taylor, maybe the best in America, standing on his own 12-yard line. Back deep is A.J. Henning. Unfortunately, this is what they love to do. This is like Iowa's strength. Tory sends it down field. Good kick. Backs Henning up to the 20, and he's knocked off his feet by Cooper DeGene. You've got to force Iowa to do what they're not comfortable doing. Make Spencer Petras go out there and beat you. I don't want them to score. I want a, I want a shutout. I don't want them to score. Given Iowa struggles offensively, you can get into the 20s and they're going to have problems catching up. Jalen Harold did a great hit on Spencer Petras. Feels like Iowa has got to force a field goal attempt. Here comes a blitz, rolling to his right, looking downfield. He's going to fire back in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Donovan Edwards holds it in for the Michigan touchdown. Hawkeyes need to generate some offense. Here comes the rush, and he spun to the ground. Sack. Mike Morris comes off the edge. Back to pass. Here comes the pressure again. Get him, Yabby. And swung to the ground. Yabby Oki. And the Wolverines will take over on downs. Michigan a chance to put this one away. J.J. McCarthy under center. Blake Corum in the backfield, the lone setback. Big play here. Turns and hands it to Blake Corum. Running right, hesitates, makes a man miss, and he's going to walk into the end zone. Blake Corum from 19 yards out, and the Wolverines have taken a 27-7 lead. will pack up and take home a win from Iowa City. A well-earned win on a day that Michigan controlled play most of the day.